this car is almost perfect. It's so good. There, I love it. I've enjoyed it. The time I've driven in it has been awesome, but I could not recommend it because there is one thing that is a deal breaker. It's a pretty classic deal breaker. So let's talk about the Kia EV6 GT. So I've started seeing a lot of EV6s around on the road. I got really curious about it. This is the GT version, so it's the slightly fast, well, a lot faster, sportier, more fun to drive version of the EV6. But I'd seen these around and I got curious about it. So getting to actually drive it was gonna be really eye-opening. And I never thought I would like a Kia this much. I think that's what it comes down to. That This is a really, really solid and unbelievably fun vehicle to drive. So let's get into the good things and you'll see what I mean by the deal breaker in a second. So you can see by the shape what the EV6 is. It's a hatchback, it's four doors, it's got a decent amount of space and it's fully electric. And then like I said, there is a regular EV6 that's not the GT. So a couple ways to be able to tell that you're looking at a GT version is these vertical slats and these design details up here in the grill. These are also vertical design details. There's a little bit more aggressive angles. The rear diffuser looks a little better. But the easiest way is the neon green. So these brake calipers, 21 inch wheels. It's on winter tires right now, but the neon green, definitely GT. And then it has the same shape as the regular EV6, which I really like. It's kind of a teardrop shape and in general looks quite nice. It's like kind of a Model Y height. That might be its most direct competitor, a little bit lower than Mustang Mach-E GT. But then also back here, you've got the sporty spoiler. So that's another way of seeing You've got the GT. This part here sort of tilts up and acts a little bit like a spoiler. And then you've got EV6 over here and GT down there. Honestly, I think it's a great looking car. Uh, I've seen a lot of, actually a lot of satin ones on the road. There's like this satin gray color. This one, this red one here is called, can we read that? Runway red, pretty classic cherry red. Uh, but let's get more into the details. So first of all, it's a hatchback. This is the key for it. I've seen some of these keys that have this like forward and backward out of parking spaces. I have not been able to get them to work, unfortunately, but the rest of the key is pretty solid. Hold here to open the hatchback and we'll get a look at those lights and getting into the back of the EV6. There's a good amount of space. So a pretty classic telltale sign, a way of knowing that the car that's electric that you're looking at wasn't built from the ground up to be electric is if it doesn't have like extra features over the gas powered version. Like this one, it has a tiny front trunk, a little 20 liter front trunk. But honestly, I think the space in the back here of the EV6, it's a little less than the GT because it's got a bigger rear motor, but I would say that this is pretty good still too. Move the tire mobility kit and show you. Tiny slot down here for charging cables and a good normal amount of room for groceries. These all fold flat. For a $65,000 car, it would be cool if these would... Oh, let's see if I can... Okay, they won't come back up automatically, but that's a good amount of space. That's a good amount of space. There are no lights in the trunk, but you do get that button to close it. Uh, and here's a, a better look at the rear at the lights, which I also really like. Nice tail light bar all the way across here. This is the blinker. And this is the electric charge port, which I do have to go into the car to open, which I wish there was a button on the key for it, but right here anyway, push that. And it's a normal CCS port, which is probably a good time to address the elephant in the room, which is this car's biggest downfall, which is its range. Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Could you please say that again? I said, it's probably a good time to address this car's biggest downfall, its range. So the EV6 GT has more powerful motors and is faster and sportier than the regular EV6, but it didn't get a bigger battery pack. And so with its 77 kilowatt hour battery, it has a max range of 200 miles, 200 miles. It does have 350 kilowatt charging. It is a pretty accurate 170 to 200 miles on a full battery if you charge to 100% every time. But that's about half of what I would hope to get for $65,000, 200 miles. So that that's the challenge here. Like this is the shape of a really practical, everyday type of car, which the EV6 is. It's got the back seats and we'll go inside in a second, but it's got the performance and the fun and the sportiness combined with practical, just minus the practical range to do any sort of road tripping. Maybe you can do like commuting every day. I've done commuting and I have a 30 mile commute and it's 
gone well before the end of the week. I have to recharge. So this is something to think about. It's a deal breaker for me. I couldn't recommend or buy this, but now knowing that, let's get into some of the more interesting details here. So it's got these door handles that sort of pop out like that. We can get in, nice little entrance. And here we are in the cockpit of the EV6 GT. There's a power button here. It does say EV and that's your power. And then this is your drive shifter to shift to drive or to park, brake hold, parking cameras and music. No, no, no. So, okay, some things that I love here and some things that I don't. First of all, there's a little bit more GT happening. There is a GT button on the steering wheel, which will change drive modes. And I'll talk about the driving in a second. Uh, but there's also, you'll notice, these really sporty GT bucket seats, which are very comfortable. They're really nice. They're also heated along with the steering wheel with three different levels, and that's also great. But generally this like neon green thing is how you know you're looking at a GT, and I do really like these seats. Shout out to the back seats, which are also heated, not ventilated, but there's also a full-size power outlet back there and a good enough leg room good materials. It's a Kia. I mean, you're going to be pretty used to the classic, like glossy plastic, brushed metal, but fake plastic again, plastic here, a lot of plastic up here and some rubberized materials. This is, this is probably where you'd say you don't want to spend 65 grand on a car like this, but I do think it's well put together. It's just not expensive materials. Now we got to get to this part. This is the part, this is the autofocus part, right? The technology in the car and how you interact with it. I could give this whole system like a, a B minus or a C plus. Up here, it's gonna remind me a lot of the Ionic 5. So this is a relatively responsive piece of software. It's your computer. You do have the screen behind the steering wheel, which is great too. 84%, 176 miles. <sighs> this is the Achilles heel. I mean, I've seen as high as like 213 miles, I think with 100% battery. But you can dig in the settings here. The navigation is decent and it will navigate you to chargers and you can do a whole bunch more. I say this because yes, this car has Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, but it's not wireless, okay? So there's a nice little spot for the wireless charger here. You can pop your phone in there. It fits a huge phone. This is an S23 Ultra. This turns orange when you're charging. It turns green when it's done charging. But then this is my navigation and it doesn't beam it up here wirelessly. Instead, you would have to use one of these two cables down here, which means your phone is gonna end up down in this tray. And as you drive around, it kind of slams around in there, which is not ideal. So you could do that and it'll charge your phone wired and you'll get it up here. But this is like the natural place to pop your phone when you get in the car. So it's kind of unfortunate that it doesn't have wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. Nevertheless, the software is capable, right? It's got even these these crazy settings that will do uh, the sound that the car makes as you're driving. So how it responds to the accelerator pedal, the exact sounds that it makes. You can kind of do this rumbling sound if you're into that. The bottom line is there's a lot here and it's fine. It's fine in the layout. I wish there was the wireless CarPlay element, but that works for me. You also get your parking cameras here and you do have a little walk around camera, so you do get a white one, no matter what color your spec is. Fine, whatever, it's functional, it works. This is a very wide angle camera, but it's also functional, you get used to it. So yeah, generally pretty good software. This part though, a little annoying, I will say, because by default, you can see that says volume power. And when I change this, it's a volume knob for your audio. My phone's connected, that's gonna be volume. HVAC controls, I must go in and hit this little notch here to switch it to HVAC controls. Now, this is a temperature selector, right? So this, this little knob has two different functions depending on if you hit this touch target or not. It makes sense, you can get used to it. It's just this little touch target is kind of small, so sometimes I'll jump in the car and think I'm doing one thing, but if I miss, then I'm doing the other thing, and suddenly the volume's way up when I want to turn it up with the heat, you know? A little bit of nitpicky, but this is the type of stuff that I think you could probably improve with a few more real switches or real buttons. I think Ionic 5 kind of learned the same lesson. It is what it is. But let's talk about driving. So this has turned out to be probably the most fun EV you can drive under 70 grand. I say that because the only other option there would be like Mach-E GT, Tesla Model Y, 
The Taycan is is every bit as fun, but it's very expensive. Um, so that's gonna come down to your performance figures and how capable this Kia is. I've been very impressed. This is, first of all, dual motors, all wheel drive, 580-ish horsepower. I'm talking about zero to 60 in low to mid threes, and it pulls, it really keeps pulling. Uh, just a blast to drive. And then on top of the straight line performance, very balanced and very fun and engaging to actually move around. So you've got this drive mode button here on the steering wheel. You can hit that and see that it switches between these three drive modes, sport, eco, and normal. But if you wanna have a little bit more fun, I mean, this changes a bunch of settings, all types of things like the suspension, dampening, softening, accelerator pedal, um, responsiveness, but as soon as you wanna have a little more fun, there's this GT button over here. Press that GT button. Everything turns the neon green. So you might not have noticed this, but you can kind of see these little things lighting up here. There's a lot of ambient lighting all around the car. For these three modes, it's eco, normal, those are blue. Sport turns everything red. But then neon green GT is gonna be your full power. Traction control turns off by default, uh, and it lets you have a little bit more fun with the way this car can approach its own limits. And it's sick. Now, the one other thing you can get out of this GT button is a personalized My Drive mode. And the cool thing about that is you get to choose every single little thing. So steering response, acceleration response, suspension. So I have everything in Sport Plus, but you might wanna do Sport Plus, but with a softer suspension or with a uh, a little bit more traction control. All these types of things can be adjusted in your own driving mode. And that's the one that I drove in the most often. That's also the one that's gonna get you, you know, roughly 200 miles of range. Eco can get you a bit more, and it does appear to turn off the front motors in Eco, but it doesn't It doesn't do a ton as far as total range you can get. Um, so it's a car you have fun in, and then have to charge very quickly. In its sportiest setting, in the GT mode, the car, it, it seems to shrink around you. It feels smaller than it really is, even though visibility is great and there's a glass sunroof and everything. I just mean like, it feels very nimble and tight and quick. And then you saw GT mode has traction control off or at least reduced, so it allows for some slip, you know, some understeer, some playfulness. I love it for back roads because it really lets you stay on the power more through curves and play with it a little bit. But that's unlike the sport mode, which is closer to a lot of other cars, which you know cuts power, limits any slip, and most of the time keeps you planted when the wheel is turned. Either way, it's great to have both. And the bigger brakes on the GT are also great. Maybe my only nitpicky driving complaint is that steering is you know kind of video gamey because there's not a ton of actual feel but also the firmest suspension setting is just a little bit bouncy sometimes, just a little bit. There is also a drift mode. Uh, I didn't try it. It's in New Jersey on winter tires. I'm not trying to do that on a public road, but it's there. Oh, also such a minor detail, but on the steering wheel, this is volume up. This is volume down, makes perfect sense. This is previous track and this is next track. I think that's backwards. But you know what? That's the idea. That's what a lot of people are looking for in a car, right? Let me just open the front trunk real quick so I can at least show you it. Um, the combination of practical and fun. Practical and fun. I think with this Kia, you get 75% of the practical and a 90% of the fun. And I think they maybe could have gone to the absolute maximum of practical if they had designed this around having maybe a little bit more storage space up at the front. I mean, that's literally almost nothing. You could fit a bagel in there maybe. Um, but the fun part is, is pushed about as far as I think you could have at this price. It's awesome. So like, if I'm thinking about who should buy this car, who would I actually recommend this car to? Not a lot of people would want to drop 65 grand on a Kia, let's be real. But the people who would spend 65 grand on this are also going to be considering things like the Mach-E GT, the Tesla Model 3 performance or Model Y performance, things in this price range that are high fun and high practical. All of those will have more range than this, dramatically, every single one, like by at least 100 miles. 
And so that's going to be the Achilles heel of the, this GT is it's it's so much fun and it's just such a pain to charge two thirds or 60% more often than the others. I really wish I could love it more, but that's the thing that's holding it back. That's the thing, Kia. It's the thing. It's so close. Please make a version with a 110 kilowatt hour battery or something. This is 77 and you charge up to 100% every day and it does its thing, but please make a high battery pack version, please. Okay, it's my only request. That's it. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Peace.